Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I'm very excited to show you the MSI 785GM E65 AM3 motherboard. Now this one here is the latest from MSI, just released last week. It has, of course, the latest chipset, the 785G Northbridge chipset, and the Southbridge is a 710. Now this one here is for AM3 processors only, okay, so it's an AM3 socket motherboard. Supporting all the latest Athlon 2s and the Phenon 2s, you know, the, the dual cores and the quad cores with DDR3 support, of course, all the way up to 16 gigs of RAM you can install on there. Has an integrated video card. This time it's the HD 4200. Okay, so latest support for the 4200 is DirectX 10.1. You've got the shader model 4.1 support as well. And it has a whole slew of standard features such as uh, HD audio, your gigabit LAN built in, of course. All of that is there. Let's take a closer look at it more in detail here, okay? So starting from the uh, bottom board where the Southbridge uh, chipset is, under that MSI heatsink that you see right there. It's got a nice dark silver on black and blue color scheme going on on this board. And here in the center, you've got the Northbridge chipset. As you can see, another nice little heat sink on that with a pipe going to the voltage regulators. You can see the solid high quality capacitors there. And um, this is definitely a board that can take uh, all kinds of CPUs all the way up until 140 watt CPU. So if you've got a heavy quad core that you want to install on here, you don't need to be afraid with this micro ATX board because it will support it. So the other thing about this board that you want to take into consideration is DDR3 up to 16 gigs. That's great. So future expandability is there. But if you have older parallel port connectors that you need to you need to connect, there has the support for the header for that. Floppy drive connector has the support for that. Also an IDE connector if you have an old drive. So and on top of that you can see the power connector. And further down below you've got five uh, SATA connectors, four at the front, one at the back, and you can see there also USB headers along the side here, as well as the CMOS reset, an optical header there, the, your firewire, and the audio headers right beside theirs. Okay, now on top of all those headers, you've got the PCI Ex Express slot there and the two PCI slots right there, and you also have one PCI Express 1X slot. Now, right beside that black little slot there, you've got the switch, the easy overclocking switch. So for those of you that don't know how to overclock in the BIOS, then you can use this little switch, and there's basically only three settings, the default, overclocking the front side bus to 10%, 15%, or 20% for the front side bus, so that you can overclock it hassle-free. So that's one way to overclock it. Personally, I love this method, but I like to get my hands dirty and going into the BIOS and tweaking things quite a bit. So I'm going to be overclocking it using the BIOS. Now look at this at the back. You've got the standard optical for a multimedia type of board. You've got the PS2 connection. You've got VGA and DVI out. You've got tons of USB as well as the HDMI out, of course. Your Firewire plug, some more USBs and eSATA out as well. So lots of support there as well as your gigabit LAN and your HD audio connections. Okay, so you've got everything for your full surround sound multimedia PC. Here's a look at the back for those that are interested on that charcoal dark uh, brown look there with the uh, back plate for the CPU already included. Here's my test system. Like I said, here are all the parts latest and greatest uh, on this Lian Li case that I'm using as you can see right here. Okay, and booting this up into the BIOS, the uh, interesting part is the cell menu of this award BIOS that it's using, and it detected the latest AMD2 um, Phenom2 X2 550, which is running at 3.1 gigahertz. So it detected everything flawless with this BIOS. I didn't have to upgrade or anything. Lots of features in here for overclocking and tweaking, and that's what I really like about this board. A lot of flexibility to go in and really maximize the most you can out of your memory and um, and the CPU and not only that but also the onboard VGA you can actually overclock the HD 4200 uh, video card that's on board further from its default 500 megahertz right so you can go in here and just increase that to 600 or 700 right and then and then try it out and see how it does so this is very very interesting now going into Windows uh, 7 RTM release which I have installed here you can see the CPU Z settings on this uh, processor how it detected it here are the defaults that it of course uh, is able to uh, run hassle-free and 
Here is the uh, cache information as well as the motherboard information. Of course, I'm running that uh, and it's detected fine. And uh, the uh, default uh, memory timings as well. I did not overclock anything yet. So these are all the defaults and everything is um, right on the money, detected properly and stable. Including the Catalyst. I installed the Catalyst ATI drivers and it detected everything fine. And you can see here the uh, default core and memory clock speeds for this uh, HD4200, which, uh, which I mentioned, okay? Now, going into temperatures, if you run this at no load, at what I have here, this board was very nice. It kept my processor uh, at uh, a nice cool 18, 19, and on full load, I had it at about 27 degrees Celsius, so the uh, board itself was nice and, and cool as well. So this is a very, very nice board. Now, let's try to push it and make it uh, do the most it can. So I ran the AMD's uh, overdrive utility, which automatically overclocks, and it gave me 3.5 gigahertz. So it worked really well with the board memory and CPU that I had to automatically overclock it. But then I went into the bias and I overclocked it further by tweaking all the values, and I got 3.8 gigahertz. So that's 700 megahertz more, and uh, also overclocked the memory a little bit as well to 688 times two because it's DDR3 effectively so there you go a very very good board for overclocking and uh, temperatures were just about 10 degrees more when overclocking it on full load 40 degrees Celsius total 3.8 gigahertz on this Phenom 2 X2 550 even the the video card I overclocked using the bias settings right from 500 megahertz to 7 very nice so included with this uh, box, you're going to get obviously a quick installation manual. You're going to get the uh, driver CD, of course, with uh, utilities from MSI, which you can install to, um, to tweak your board. And also you've got the regular manual, right, the book that has everything you need about the board, as well as the I.O. shield plate that goes at the back of your case, right, so color-coded there, so very nice. And... A few cables, right? A few connectors. So you've got your SATA, the red one there, and you've got a power connector, the Molex, the SATA power connector, and also an IDE um, connector as well. So that's basically it. That's your full package from MSI. Stable board, very power efficient, very good support for overclocking on the latest uh, CPUs from AMD. And I'd like to thank MSI for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.